Look, would you agree that this scene becomes more interesting the moment I add a stream of particles? There exists a quick and easy way of doing this along with a seamless animation loop. Let me show you how. Starting off with a plane at the base, attach a geometry node modifier and carefully build up this node setup, making sure that these three fields are exactly the same and this fourth field is equal to the end frame. The result should be a stream of particles rising with a seamless animation loop. Now for those who want to understand this node setup in particular, or those who want to learn more about geometry nodes in general, let me point out these four set position nodes and the branch of nodes attached to them. And to demonstrate how each branch affects the result, let's take a few steps back. When a new geometry node modifier is created, it only contains a group input and a group output node. The group input holds the geometry of the parent object, which in this case is a plane and where ember particles will be instantiated with the help of a few more nodes. The easiest way to add a particular node is to bring up the Add menu with Shift A, then use the search field to find that node. For example, the Distribute Points on Faces node, along with the Instance on Points node, and the Icosphere node. Once in place, instantiate a large number of particles all attached to the surface of the original plane. To separate these particles from the plane and scatter them over a volume, add a set position node. This node can move the particles along any of the x, y, or z axes. As a result, the set position node in combination with a random value node, scatters the particles evenly within the bounds of a vertical column. The particles are suitably scattered, but to make them rise requires another set position node, this time alongside a vector math node with its operation set to scale, and a map range node. On the map range node, type in the tag sign followed by the term frame. This simple driver gives the current frame in the animation loop. Now if the from max value is set equal to the end frame, the map range node will convert the current frame given by the driver into a new variable that starts from zero at the beginning of the animation and increases to one towards the end. This new variable is then passed over to the scale node to generate a proportional vector along the z-axis, which is eventually fed into the set position node. Make sure that this value is equal to the height of the column previously set here. As a result of all this, the particles rise indefinitely until they move outside the screen. To take each particle before it goes off the screen and have it respawn at the base, let's add yet another set position node, a vector math node with its operation set to modulo, and a position node. With these nodes in place, particles are teleported back to the base of the column the moment they reach the top. Just be careful that these three values must be identical for this to work. At this point, the scattered particles collectively rise with a seamless animation loop. But the way they move right now isn't really that interesting. What would make it interesting is randomness. To make this happen, add the fourth and final set position node, a vector math node with its operation set to multiply, and a noise texture node.
these three nodes, when combined, add random movement to the particles. Keep in mind that the scale of the noise texture determines the frequency of the randomized motion, while the multiply node determines their amplitude. This brings us to the next natural step, which is to make the embers gradually disappear as they move upward. To do this, bring in a scale instances node, a map range node, a separate XYZ node, and a position node. Here, from the position of each particle, the Z component is separated and then passed over to the map range node. With its parameters properly set, the map range node produces a scale value that decreases as the particles rise. But we still need a material for the embers. To create this material, switch over to the shading workspace and set up these shader nodes. Then switch back to the geometry nodes workspace and use a set material node to assign the newly created material to the particles. At last, we have a stream of rising embers with a seamless animation loop. This brings us to the end of this tutorial, which is where I show a snapshot of the entire node setup and point out the important parameters. Be sure to watch this next video if you want to combine these embers with a smoke effect. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.